Hello, welcome to my video where we're going to review all of the stuff that's happening inside of your digestive system. So we're going to start in the mouth. In the mouth, you have salivary glands. So you have actually a few different ones. You have ones at the back of your mouth on the sides, and you have ones underneath your tongue. They release saliva. And your saliva has a pH of 7 to 8, so a little bit basic sometimes, but mostly usually neutral. First, I have a bit of water. So that's going to just help make sure the food isn't super, super dry so it's easier to swallow and start to break down. And also dissolve some of the food so that we can actually get the chemicals in it and use them in our taste buds. We also have a little bit of mucus to, again, make it easier to swallow our food so it's not super, super, super dry. And our first enzyme is called salivary amylase because it's from the saliva. So this is what's going to take all of our complex carbohydrates, so things that are polysaccharides, so for example starch, and it's going to start breaking it down into something like maltose. So after it leaves the mouth, it would be going down the esophagus, okay, right here, and it would enter the stomach. In this picture, you can see the inside of the stomach. It actually has folds on the inside, which increases the surface area, and also allows it to, if it has to stretch out, there is extra tissue for it to be able to stretch out. So on the walls of the stomach, there, um, there's things called gastric pits, which are like glands and they release gastric juice, which is super, super acidic. So it has a pH of one to two. This is the only place in the body that's not neutral slash a little bit basic. So inside of our stomach acid or gastric juice is the fancy name, we have a little bit more mucus, which again helps lubricate the food, but is also going to be protecting the stomach wall. So there is a layer of mucus on the inside of the stomach that protects the stomach wall from the really, really acidic nature, otherwise it would burn us, and also protects the stomach from being digested by the enzymes that are in the stomach acid or the gastric juice. So hydrochloric acid is what makes the stomach acid really acidic, and it's acidic because it helps loosen the protein fibers, so helps us do a little bit of physical digestion, so not actually chemically breaking down proteins, but just making it so that it's easier to get in with the protein enzyme and start breaking it down by just loosening it a little bit. It would increase the surface area of it and also kills bacteria in our food so it doesn't make us sick. So that's what hydrochloric acid does for us. Pepsin is the first protein enzyme that we have, so it's found in our stomach and it's going to basically take a quaternary protein, which is all shriveled up in a ball, and basically break the bonds between the quaternary protein to cause it to be a primary protein. So this would be the exact same thing that's happening when you're denaturing a protein, basically just unfolding it from a quaternary into a primary. It just makes it easier to start digesting it, pulling it apart. If it's a tiny little ball and you're pulling it apart, it starts getting tangled up and whatnot. So we want to make sure that it's nice and flat so it can go into our intestines and the other enzymes that digest protein are going to have a little bit of an easier time doing that. So after the stomach, you have this little sphincter right here that's going to open and close and slowly allow what we call chyme, which is like liquid food that's now digested with some hydrochloric acid and some enzymes in it, going to just slowly allow it into our first part of our small intestine so that we're not bombarding our small intestine. Slowly but surely, we're adding that stuff into our intestine so that it can start breaking it down, and then as it breaks it down, we can allow a little bit more in. So now we have our small intestine. The first section is called the duodenum. Okay, this is basically where every single thing gets broken down. Besides the little bit of salivary amylase and the little bit of pepsin that's released, this is where all of the enzymes are taking place. So this is like the money maker of digestion. So because in that picture you can't really see it, this is the actual duodenum. The stomach would be connected to it right here, and we have a few different things that are connected to it. So we have the liver and the gallbladder releasing some stuff. We have the pancreas, okay, that looks like this like fleshy angel wing. And then we also have some stuff coming from the actual wall of the intestine. So we're going to go through all three of those things. So first we're going to start with the liver which makes stuff and then sends it to the gallbladder and the gallbladder is in charge of releasing it. So you can actually see the gallbladder is connected to the duodenum right here. So it secretes something called bile and bile is what causes vomit to look yellow. It also makes your feces turn brown, so that's because of bile. Bile has a pH of 8 and it has bile salts 
which is what emulsifies. So again, I use the color blue because it's not actually chemically breaking down food, breaking bonds. It's physically making them in smaller pieces. So it's going to take this huge hunk of fat and it's going to just make smaller pieces of fat. So it's easier for the enzyme lipase chemically break down our fat, just increases the surface area of it so it happens faster. And it also has some sodium bicarbonate that's released from the gallbladder to neutralize that really, really acidic time that's coming into the duodenum. We don't want to burn the duodenum with really, really acidic, so it's going to basically neutralize it using that sodium bicarbonate. So this is what it looks like when I take a large droplet of fat and mix it with bile. It just makes the tiny pieces of fat. So this would be like I take a piece of paper and I rip it into a bunch of pieces. Yes, it's a bunch of smaller pieces of paper, but it's still paper. I haven't changed the chemical composition of it. So it's still fat. It's still triglycerides, just smaller pieces of triglyceride. So the pancreas releases a bunch of enzymes. It's super, super important when we talk about digestion. So again, it's releasing it into the duodenum right here. What it's releasing is called pancreatic juice. And again, has a very neutral slash basic pH. It again releases some sodium bicarbonate that's used to neutralize our pH and a whole bunch of enzymes. So the first one is called trypsin. So trypsin is going to take that polypeptide, so like basically flattened out protein. I called it a primary protein. And it's basically just going to pull it in half. So it's a smaller polypeptide, but still a polypeptide because there's like three or more amino acids attached to it. We also have peptidase, which is going to complete protein digestion by taking those smaller polypeptides, eventually making them into dipeptides, which is just two amino acids, and then pulling them apart into individual amino acids. We also have pancreatic lipase, okay? So that's basically taking that triglycerides that are smaller pieces that have been emulsified and breaking them down into glycerol and fatty acids, which is our monomers of fat. And the last one, we have a little bit more amylase because it only really stays in our mouth for maybe a few seconds to a, maybe a minute or two minutes tops. So the chances of all of the starch being broken down into maltose by this point is pretty slim. So we're just giving like round two for the starches that are still in that food um, to get broken down into maltose or any disaccharide. So we're taking polysaccharides and making disaccharides. Now we also have the intestinal wall, at least intestinal juice, same pH as before. They have more peptidase. Um, protein is really difficult for our body to break down. So this is, again, like round two to break down all of those smaller polypeptides um, into amino acids eventually. We also have something that I would call carbohydrases. That's like a category of enzymes. It breaks down carbohydrates. So it's going to take all of our disaccharides and break them into monosaccharides. So, for example, maltose is going to be broken by maltase. Sucrose is being broken down by sucrase and lactose is being broken down by lactase. So all of those are released from the intestinal wall and just added into the duodenum so that all of the chyme that enters the duodenum is going to be broken down into all of its monomers. So you'll notice that at this point, all of the different carbohydrates, the proteins, the lipids are all broken down now into its monomer. So this was the duodenum right here, the top part of our small intestine. Now I'm moving into the second part, the middle part of my small intestine called the jejunum. And basically, the food is just passing through the jejunum. A little bit of absorption into our blood is happening, but mostly it's just kind of traveling through this area. We don't break down anything in this area. We're just basically starting to absorb stuff. Everything has already been broken down when it gets to the duodenum. After it leaves the duodenum, it is completely broken down into monomers. So moving from our jejunum, now into the last part of our small intestine, which is called the ileum. This is where all of our absorption of nutrients happens. So if I look on the inside of my ileum, I'm going to show you guys a picture of that on the next slide. It has a really large surface area. So it has the inside of it's actually folded up. And then those folds have folds on them. So they have something called villi on the inside that would increase the surface area causing it to have lots of different places for the nutrients to be absorbed and also is connected to a whole bunch of blood vessels so that the blood can take in all of those nutrients. All of my monomers of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates are absorbed into my blood and then eventually they're carried to my liver so that I can make sure that they're assimilated 
for lipids, so the glycerol and fatty acids are actually going into my lymphatic system, which is a bit, a bit different, and I'm going to teach you about that in a few chapters, what the lymphatic system is. So this is the inside of my ileum. Notice there's a whole bunch of folds, but if I look on the folds, there's actually individual folds. So these are called villi, and then you have microvilli, okay, basically just a super large surface area so that I can make sure I get as much nutrients in the fastest time possible so that I'm getting nutrients to my body. So for example, if I'm doing cellular respiration, I need glucose. If I'm making proteins because I maybe um, I'm making new cells, I need those amino acids to make new proteins. Okay, so those nutrients are really, really important. So I want to be as efficient as possible to absorb them. So once they go inside the microvilli, they're going to go across the cell membrane and go either into our blood, so this capillary bed right here, or into the green part, which is my lymphatic system. And then this is actually what it looks like. So if I was going to take a real intestine and cut it in half, and then this is using um, an electron microscope, just seeing what it looks like in real life. So cartoon version, real version. So in the ileum, these are all of my monomers that I'm absorbing. So every single type of monomer that I have, if you look at your pink sheet, glucose, fructose, galactose are all of my monomers of carbohydrates. Fatty acids, glycerol, amino acids, and nucleotides. So those are all of my monomers that I have. Now I'm moving into my large intestine. So again, my large intestine is basically just there to absorb whatever's left over. I have no nutrients left to absorb. All of my nutrients have been absorbed in my small intestine. No breakdown is happening because that happened in my duodenum. I'm just basically left with indigestible matter, which is talking about things that I can't actually absorb. So things like plant fiber and some water and some salt. I also am going to take that water in. Okay, If I didn't take this water in, I would end up with diarrhea, which we all know is not super comfortable. And I also am going to absorb some salts. I need salts in my body to do certain processes. So I want to make sure that I have those in my bloodstream. And the last thing that I have is bacteria, my large intestine. They are there and we have a symbiotic relationship where we're both getting something. So bacteria can actually absorb some of the, or break down some of the fiber that we can't. And they use it for food for themselves. And in return, they give us vitamins. So like vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B12, all of those vitamins are coming from your bacteria in your gut. So if you don't have the proper ratio of bacteria in your gut, what ends up happening is you might have some intestinal issues that go along with that because your body's not getting the proper vitamins um, and it's going to cause some issues um, with digestion and you might just have like either constipation or diarrhea when you're gut bacteria is just a little off. So just in conclusion, just making sure we understand that the large intestine is only really for absorption of water, salts, and vitamins. No nutrients are absorbed in this area. It's just that last chance for our body to get those extra things that we need before we release this um, material to the outside world. So all the water, the salts, the vitamins that's left over in the indigestible matter, which is basically feces at this point, um, is going to be absorbed and then it will move into our rectum. It will send a signal to our brain saying that we have to go to the bathroom and then we will remove it from the anus into the toilet. So this is the end of digestion. Have a wonderful day and I will see you guys tomorrow.